Did you come across any high profile prisoners? Um, quite a few high profile prisoners. There's one or two mentioned in the book. Right. If I explain, um, there's a lot of prisons in the book that are anonymous. Yeah. And, and, and this is, this is how I looked at it when I worked with a writer. The fire starter who's in the book, right? There's a guy in the beginning who is a prolific self-harmer and sets cells on fire. As a prison officer, dealing with things like that, you know, can be quite stressful and quite difficult. You don't need to know who that guy is, yeah? And lots of people in that book. You didn't need to know who they were, but what I wanted to put across is what you have to deal with. Part of the thing with high-profile prisoners is, is is how that affects you. So obviously, you know, Mark Bridges mentioned in the book, I would not want to give kudos to anyone like Mark Bridger. Um, we had Dale Cregan. What was Mark Bridger's story? He he, he basically um, killed a young girl. He, you know, at the time he said he'd run her down or whatever. Horrendous for the family. So it was about dealing with people like him. You know, I've seen... Well, it might sound sad. I don't know. You, you tell me. There's, um, there's a couple of programs where they, they've done documentaries, and one of them I've watched about five times with that guy, because I worked with him for ten months, and I, I didn't realise how much he affected me. And one of my friends, one of the nurses who worked on there, she said the same. When she'd actually left the prison, she didn't realise how much that guy had got under his skin and how much she hated him. You know, these high-profile prison. Prisoners are not treated with kid gloves. That's wrong. The, the worst thing for the prison service would be if Mark Bridger killed himself before trial. So he was he was put on health care where I worked and not protected. That's a wrong word, Sean. You know, you got to look after him and give him everything he was entitled to, but also keep him safe. People won't understand that. But if you're going to do the job particularly where I worked on healthcare, we had all manner high-profile prisoners come on and come off, then you have to be professional. Was it the nature of his crimes that affected you or was it the actual dealing with him and his energy? All of it, you know. Um, what was it about him that affected you then in, in, in today? He was uh, very manipulative. I could see that, you know. Um, he'd have staff talking to him. Let's get something right. These people, if you see it, the psychologists, people better than me and more qualified than me, will tell you they're very manipulative. They dark people. I saw one guy say he was probably one of the 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 worst killers he'd ever come across. You know, just just by his actions and how he behaved and that. And they'll draw people in. Prison officers are normal people at the end of the day. While we're on that subject, we'll stay on the high profile. But as a prison officer, like I've said, Sean. They're not all like me. They're not six foot, 18 stone. There is some lads bigger than me, but not a lot. There's a lot of lasses in there. There's a lot of sort of middle-aged, older people in there. So how I would put it to you was, how, how you would view prison officers. You imagine a wedding. You know, one of your families, a wedding you've been to. You've had a good day. All the friends have come at night, right? So bam, you stop the music. Anyone under 18, get rid of them. Anyone over... 68 now, because as a prison officer, you're capable of working at 68, which is disgusting. Get them out of the room and have a look what you've got. You know, you've got your your 50-year-old auntie who's lovely and does baking. She's a prison officer. You know, her husband likes a few pints. He's a prison officer. Your nephew plays rugby. He's a big lad. He's a prison officer. They're not all like me. They're not all big with bald heads. They're just normal people. Yeah. Civil servants, end yeah. of the day. Yeah. So, you know, some of them are vulnerable some do get taken in, you know, it, it's it's a very difficult job. And and that's what I wanted to put out there. It is a difficult job and the normal people doing that job. No amount of training will, will ever prepare anyone. You know, that was that was a bit of criticism that was levelled at me. Somebody said about training, you know, you, you should have never been a prison officer because you've been in front of a judge. Well, I were in front of a judge for fighting, you know, when I was younger. Yeah. But that that didn't disqualify me from being a prison officer. You know, you do need tough people. You need people who've been about a bit, people who can talk. It, it is, it's actually the team. As individuals, prison officers, if we take K-Wing, when I was on K-Wing, there were 40 staff. 
Yeah, 20 of them staff, fantastic staff, 10 pretty good staff, and 10 staff who weren't good. But as a team, together, we got a really good reputation and it worked really well. And that's what it's about.